What's crack YouTube? Merrick here, back again. As you can see, we're into the month of January, episode eight of the Limit Career Mode. And in this video, it's actually gonna be a half a month. So as you can see, the month is kind of scheduled where there's three matches between the first and the 17th. So that's the part of the month we're gonna be playing in this episode. And then in the next episode, I'm gonna be going from the 18th to the 31st. The reason behind that is in the 18th to the 31st, I'm gonna be doing all my sign-ins and playing that Derry match. But in this episode, I'm gonna be making scouting players that I want, might want to sign and playing Dundalk. I was gonna say Sligo, but that's St. Pat's. And then Dundalk again. Um, and obviously scouting the players that I want. I'm also gonna be doing a comment by the ghost, should be up on your screens now. He said, you should set up a scouting network in the US. Um, this is one of the few comments I actually get, so I'm actually gonna do it. So if we hop into our scouts, I'm gonna go set this up. Okay, so as you can see, we have one scout, Joseph Morn. He's currently scouting six players, so I'm actually gonna go in and see who he's scouting. Oh yeah, these are all the players that I decide to add. He should not be scouting him. Okay, yeah, no, that's right, he's not scouting him. Um, oh, he's a few other players scouted, actually. I'm gonna add these to my shortlist, and then I'll decide if I wanna buy him or not then. Okay, so I'm gonna recall Joseph Morn, and then I'm gonna send him off to America. And that's that done. Now, because I still need to scout a few players that I'm interested in buying, I'm gonna go across the higher scout and we're gonna look for the best scout we have here and it is, ah oh God, I'm gonna have to use Google Translate for that. I've, I've actually decided when I don't know how to pronounce a name, I'm gonna hop on Google Translate. And then all I do is have it set to English. Waiting for it now. And then I type in his name. Um, and it'll come up, it should say it anyways. Have I spelt it right? I think so. And then I just hit the... Oh fuck, that didn't help. Swedish, see what it says now. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh god, I'm never getting that. We're just going with the Swedish lad. Um, or will we go to Peter Rose because it's an easier name? It's the only difference between them. I guess, I don't know, I'll just go with him because I can say his name very easily. So here is our new scout and and he's gonna be the player, or the scout that we're gonna be using to scout the players I want to buy for this January transfer. Okay, so if we go into Transfer Hub, I have a few names and players that I'm hoping to hopefully sign. And as you can see by the majority of literally this whole first page, they're Irish. I went through my team and I was counting up how many Irish players I have in my starting 11 first team, and it's only two. So I said, it is an Irish team, so I'm gonna have to have more Irish players in it to make it kinda realistic, even though it's not really realistic as it is. But like, I just feel that I should stick true to the country that Limerick are in, instead of just buying all these Colombians and French and all these other countries. I'm not saying it's gonna be a pure Irish thing, it's just saying I'm gonna have more Irish players in it. Not generally starting, maybe some coming off the bench, but. This is what I'm looking at at the moment. And just in case you didn't notice, as you can see, there's a center mid, center mid, center mid, cam, cam. If you don't get what I'm going for here, I'm hoping to buy a more attacking midfielder so Feeney doesn't have to do all the work. And that's kind of my idea behind this. So if you know any serious center mids, preferably Irish, doesn't have to be, but like, if you know any very good center mids that's cheap, comment them straight down below right now because I want a good center mid that will absolutely beast the Europa League and what's left of it, which will be very hard because there's a lot of good teams in it. Okay, so as you can see, we're after getting some kind of baddish news. It's never good when the board gets involved. And as you can see, their question, does Bell Ben Wilmot have a future at Limerick FC? They're saying he's costing us a significant salary, so they're hoping I will sell him onto another club. Now, the only problem with this is I have played him in a good few games, and he probably does want to be a regular, but I really want to keep him because potential, I think, is around 80, so to have an 80 potential centre-back is huge. But he's just not, like, pushing first-team level at the moment, so I think it's probably best if I could maybe even get a trade for him for some young player that doesn't mind sitting on the bench for a lot of the time. So that's gonna probably be my aim with him. As you can see, if we go down, we have Scram has left the club. I did pre-arranged transfer. I can't even remember who he went to or how much he went for. I remember it was cheap and that's all, but it's probably the best option for him. Okay, so here we are, our first match of the January transfer window. It's against Dundalk, huge game, semi-final of the EA Sports Cup. At least their team is all on full stamina. Actually, I have to make a change. Why is O'Sullivan in there? 
I'll be back in a second. Okay, so as you can see, I've made a few changes. As you can see, actually, we have a U player. I don't even know his first name. I think it's Joseph Callanan. But as you can see, Callanan's starting in centre mid. You might be thinking this is a debatable change from my last formation and everything. But the reason behind this is because we have nobody who is above 55 free kicks in this team. He is 75 and he has 80 long shots. So he's going to be our free kick taker. He's an amazing dribbler. I think he already has 80 dribbling. So we have our passer in Feeney, our dribbler in Callan, and hopefully the midfield will do perfect. But with all that said, just let's get straight into this Dundalk match. Okay, so here we are in Oriel Park, a rainy night, pitch is looking well. It, this could be a good game. I'm, I'm kind of have high expectations for Callan because he has 80 dribbling. I didn't even realize this till maybe like a few days ago. I was just flicking through the team, making sure, because I was trying to fix, you know, the way the U Academy come with shit boots, dirty EA, black and white boots, <laughs> just terrible. So I was flicking through all them, and I realized he had 80 dribble, and I was like, what? How have I never heard of this guy? And there he is, your man on the right with the beard. Well, both of them have beards, they're like similar to each other. But anyways, I don't know how I didn't know he had 80 dribbling, but he does, so I'm going to see how he is. And I hope he is amazing. If he is amazing, he might be playing there. And we might not even have to sign anybody for this January transfer window. But I probably will to make it a little bit interesting. Yeah. Right, when you have him in his pocket. That's good. That's very good. Give it to Mendes. Colorus. Oh, that's the Paul of Victor. Can he draw out? Defender, give it to Mendes. Mendes. 1-0. Let's go. What a goal from Mendes. Sticks it into the far top corner. I think that's his weaker foot. I'm fairly sure that's his weaker foot. It was kind of... I didn't really expect him to score, but it was very good for Paulo Victor to hold your man out. And then, brilliant finish from Mendes. Have another look at that. Yeah, I'm fairly sure he is right-footed. Right in as against the side net. What a goal. It's good from Vagman. Near half-time now. Can we hold out for this half? Hopefully. Gives it back, and there we are. Half time, hopefully, I was going to say hopefully, thankfully, 1-0. Quite close recently, Dundalk, they haven't created, you know, they've been creating the chances, but they've been terrible shots, but it's been so close so far, which is not good. Come on, Callan, show us your dribbling skills. That was not very good dribbling skills. No, no, he missed, he missed. Oh my God, I am so lucky. I am so lucky. How did he miss that? It was an open header. He didn't even put it on target. What the hell? Dundalk having such an off day. Thank God. This is the best thing that could happen to us. Good again. How did that go to him? Keep it out. Again, I thought that was in top bins. Oh, I'm, I don't know. I think it's this camera angle that I keep thinking it's going in top bins. And it just misses the post, thankfully. Okay. Bring everybody back. How'd you, uh, no, we'll push the team upfield. Let's boot it long this time and see what happens. I'll pick out Colorus. He's, he's our big man. Hopefully he'll win this header. Okay, that's not Colorus. That is one of the smallest men on the pitch. But Colorus still manages to get the ball somehow. Heaney gives it to Middleton. Who oh, near, nearly gets the fake shot in. Brilliant from Mendes. Just gets shoved off the ball though. I say he's done everything. Give it to Carlos Sullivan. Oh, Carlos still has the ball. Will Carl get his first assist? No, it's saved. Oh my God, brilliant ball from Carlos Sullivan. Just started that attack all by himself. There we are, full time. So we are true to the EA Sports Cup final after beating Dundalk 1-0. Thankfully, 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 it was a very close game. I'm so happy he's head was not able to header a ball today. He's missed two very important headers that could have easily went in and we would have lost again. But brilliant goal from Mendes. Okay, so as you can see, the play, the team, I was going to say the player we're going to play in the final. The team we're going to be playing in the final is going to be St. Pats. They're after being Bohemians 3-0. So they're clearly out for blood in this tournament. I say they really want to win. If they're being Bohemians 3-0 in the semi-finals, they're definitely going to try and win this out. I think it's nearly the only silverware they can probably win at this stage as well. Okay, so literally two days after, three days after, we're playing St. Pats. So I think this is a game for our second team just so we avoid any injuries and we'll have no problems later on or else we'll have no players that'll be out for the rest of the season. 
So I'm going to play my second team and hopefully they have been developing. So hopefully they can do well in this match and we might come out with the win. Okay, so here we are in Tolman Park again. I don't know what it is about this month, but it's raining non-stop. I'm hoping our midfield will shine out in this match because that's probably where the most talent is in this team. And actually, after this match, I probably should have brought him in before this match. But I have a youth academy player who's 66 rated. He's literally like a Cam Messi. He's left-footed, 6'7 or some height. Not 6'7, 5'7. If he was 6'7, he would be nothing like Messi. So hopefully he can turn into Messi, but I'll, I'll show you him after this match. Gives it back up to Leary. So another O'Leary. Gives it across to McGuinness, who's going to hit that. 1-0. Nine minutes in, 1-0 against St. Pats. I'm not going to say much because I'm afraid I'll jinx it. No, we are going to win this game. I don't even care. Touch wood just to make sure that, doesn't, that I don't jinx myself. But so far, just putting our backs to players and then having a good crack at a shot like that is how we're up 1-0, so I'm gonna continue doing that the whole way through this game. And now we could have a, that's not the right player, but we could still have a goal opportunity here. McGuinness, can he finish it for a second? He does in the right bottom corner. This is a dream come true for our second team. Brian McGuinness has his second goal in this match. The second goal of his career, I think. He is just on fire at the moment. What a goal. Serious ball from O'Leary to start this attack. Canlan gives it through to Carlos Sullivan. No, he's going to hit one himself. Hits it. It is 3-0. It is 3-0 against St. Pats with Limerick's second team. What is happening in this game? This makes no sense. How are we beating them 3-0? Oh my god, jeez, that looked like a mosh pit up there in the, in the fucking stands. Everybody was going mental. To be fair, it was an unbelievable goal. But like, I don't understand how we were up by... Was it a chip? It had serious curl, but I'm wondering, was it a chip? I don't care, it went in. I didn't hit the chip button. The fans are going mental in the background. It's an unreal goal. And we're up 3-0 against St. Pat's. All across the floor, doesn't make it. I think that's going to be half time. So half time, we're up 3-0. It's a dream come true for our second team. I don't know how this is happening. I'm literally going to sit back and just pass it around, not letting this slip. As you can see, in the corner where the same Pats fans were meant to be, it is empty. Completely empty. I would have left too if my team was losing 3-0 at half time to a bunch of 9-year-olds. Okay, well they're actually not actually 9, but they're around. They're 17, 18. Might have a 20, 21-year-old in there, but like, hold it up. That's good. O'Leary's gone by himself. Is it no... I was about to say there's no way it's 4-0, but it is. And I stuttered right in the middle of that. But it's 4-0. Maybe I should play my second team more than I should play my first team. Well, if they're doing this well, I nearly should. But, like, maybe this is just a terrible day for St. Pass. Like, he should have been tackled back there. Easy. Easily should have been tackled back there. And goalkeeping, how was the goalkeeping? Could have just put his hands out and dived across instead of swiping at the air, but I'm not complaining, I'm not complaining. The referee has indicated that we'll hold him out, just hold him out for these last few minutes. Ah, oh, Fitzgerald, your touches are dreadful. And good, that, that's the first save O'Leary has made in this whole game. Whole 90 minutes, they haven't even got shot on target. This has been the best possible outcome for this. Literally, our under 21s, I'd probably say. This is just the best outcome possible ever. It's because I touched that wood. <laughs> that sounds a bit weird. Okay, so as you can see, I'm after selling Cahill O'Leary, our goalkeeper. Um, I found out, you know the way when you bring in a U Academy player, and then it has the like green ticks and arrows. This thing right here. He did not have one of those after I brought him up. So I said his rating does not go above 80. So I said I'm going to sell him. Because I have a goalkeeper in the waiting. Ronan Ennis I think his name is. He's between 80 and 94 potentially. He's already a 63 rated. So he's going to be our second goalkeeper. For the rest of the season. And probably for a long time to come. 
but he won't be our second goalkeeper. He'll probably push the first fairly soon. And here he is, and he's actually not between an 80 and 94. It's a 75 and 94, but as you can see, he's already a 63, so I presume he'll get up to there. And he is promoted to the senior team. Now, this is the Cam Messi. Just playmaker, left footed 5'7". As you can see, his potential is amazing. He's already 66 rated. Mm, he's not technically fast, for say. He's not strong, obviously, but he just has brilliant crossing, brilliant short passing, brilliant long passing, brilliant free kicks, brilliant curve. So, technically speaking, he's more of a Wes Houlihan than Lionel Messi, because Wes Houlihan was brilliant at passing and dribbling, but this guy doesn't really have brilliant dribbling. It's more just brilliant passing. But I am just jabbering on about something that you can see yourselves. He's being promoted to senior team. This is going to be the last player I'm promoting to the senior team, Brendan Callanan. Another Callanan. Um, as you can see, the potential has been 68 and 92, but he's already a 62 overall. He's physically strong, he's quite fast, good aggression, and then he's kind of average around everything else. But it's just how physically good he is that he, his stamina is 8. I didn't even know this. And he's also a left back, which is quite rare in this game. So he's being signed as well. That's all the signings I'm going to be doing, or all the promoting to the senior team I'm going to be doing. Um, reason being is because the rest of them aren't really up to standards. These are the ones that will push into second teams and even into the first team if they're good enough, especially that Donald O'Grady guy. Um, so hopefully he'll do well, but we'll have to see. Okay, so here you can see we have sold Donald Walsh. It was a winger who had 40-something pace. It wasn't working. It was never going to work no matter how good he got. If that guy cannot move more than five miles an hour, he's going nowhere in soccer. He was so slow, so he's been sold. And hopefully we'll eventually get a good enough winger to replace him. Okay, so this is a very, very big transfer. Jack Brady, do I sell him? He has been so good to us so far this year. 71 overall. He's not even expected to get this high. And I'm kind of feeling a bit of like emotional attachment to him. Like I don't really want to sell him personally because he's Irish. He's been with us from the start. He's doing savage so far. And I just kind of like everything about him. So this is going to be one that I'm going to need your opinion on. Do I sell him or do I not? I'm going to leave this till episode 8. I hope you say don't sell him. Okay, so this is an absolutely massive game for us. As you can see, us and Dundalk are drawn on points. We're right now on 39. So this is a must win. If we win this, we are on track to win in the Airdrie League for the second year in a row. So this is a huge important game for us. This is going to be team going with, I've decided to place O'Leary instead of Kalna. He didn't do a bad job, it's just his fitness is terrible after the last two games because I played them back to back games. And I just want to see how O'Leary fits in here and if we need to buy a player, I might buy a player. But at the moment this is, so far what I've seen, he is definitely good enough. But we'll see what he's made of now when we play the best team or one of the best teams in the Air Tristy League. Let's get into it. Okay, so when you have a camera angle like this, you already know it's going to be a massive game. I just do not understand how empty Oriel Park is right there. It is so empty. What is this about? This is okay, never mind. It is full to the brim. That was the pre-game, so, pre so that explains why it was empty. Now, as you can see, there is literally no free seats. One of the most important games of this league Let's hope we can perform under the pressure. I do not see an empty seat so far in the stadium. I'm still trying to look for... Oh, I think I might have seen one in the back corner up there. Oh my god, we are so identical by goal difference. We are so far on top in goal difference. But let's get into this and let's hope our team can outperform Dundalk. If we concede, not going to be brilliant block. Just as I said it, if we concede, I'm going to be thick. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. I think I jinxed myself when I say that. Again, touch and wood. We're going to win this game. We are going to win this game. It was fluky. Like, just so fluky. Bad pass. No way. 2-0. This is not a good outcome for us.
What? You're kidding me. No way is that a penalty. You have to be joking me. If that is a penalty, what the hell? For something I didn't do. I was trying to clear the ball. This game, this game is, it's just not ha happening for us. Where is he going? Top left. Chips it. Over a bar, that is the biggest failure of your career. This is why you're playing with such a bad team. Okay, no, I'm just trying to chat shit because I have nothing else to go on. That was a terrible penalty, but we're losing 2-0 still. I need to up the team now. I need to do very well here if we're going to pull this back. Kolarus is on. Kolarus is onside. That is surely 2-1. Okay, okay. I've never actually seen this celebration. What is going on right now? That is very, very cool. I like it. Okay, so we've just got the equaliser. Or not the equaliser. One back, which gives us hope with a savage goal from Kolarus. This game is hopefully going to end up closer than I thought it was after they got two goals early on. He hit the camera and everything. That is amazing. And there we are, half time. <sighs> this is an intense game. I thought we were gonna come here, walk all over Dundalk and walk out the door. But I was clearly, clearly wrong. We've still a lot of work to do if we're gonna draw this game even, never mind win it. This is the pl place where every team is most dangerous. Crossing the ball in is where we really do bad. Just going to boot down the line. Middleton has superior pace. Can Middleton draw this game up? Finishes it. No, oh, what a tackle from their player. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Should have hit that one earlier. What a tackle. Oh my God, that is amazing defending. Nobody really around him. Feeney gets the ball, holds it up. Gives it out to Paula Victor, who gives it back into Feeney. Looking for Colorus in the middle. Surely that's another goal. It's the post. How has he hit the post? Oh my god! How the hell has he not scored that one? Oh, this is just not our day. That is so fluky. So, so fluky for Dundalk. Oh, if that went in, that would have equalised everything up. This is, this is looking hopeful now in these late few minutes. Or the top is Lance O'Leary's feet. He has to finish this. Surely, surely. There we go, 89th minute, 2-2, two -two. O'Leary with the, probably the most important goal so far of his career. Fluky hits off the defender's arm, falls straight to his feet, and he bangs that in. Not even top corners, just a good enough goal to go in. We are so lucky, so, so lucky. Now, in this situation, I'm not sure whether I should go all out attack and hold it and go for it all, or else just give up at this stage and just be happy with the draw. Just ping it across the field, get it out. There we are, full time. Nothing more we could do in that situation. I'm just so happy we came out with a point out of that. It was just those two early goals put us under severe pressure. And we still managed to pull points out of it, which is amazing. Okay, so this is where the video is going to end. I'm just so happy we pulled away with points in Dundalk. Because if we were three points behind them, it would have been a real problem to kind of depend on another team to beat them. Where we have to make up points to just get level on them. But anyways, with all that out of the way, make sure if you did enjoy today's video, you hit that like button for more content. Subscribe. And in the next episode, we will be making as... Okay, we're not going to make a lot of signings. We're going to make one or two signings. And actually, if you give enough comments down below, make a few signings out from what you recommend as well. So, see you in the next one.